We in. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Chris and Kyle show. He's Chris. Hey. And I'm Kyle. And today we are doing our first ever The Films Of episode in what is kind of probably a weird choice to kick it off, but we're kind of fresh off me doing a hardcore deep dive into this guy, and he has three sort of... No homo. (laughs) Three sort of... uh, Similar movies that make an it make a, an episode like this really easy to do, and that is uh, director John Carney and director and musician John Carney, an Irish filmmaker, known for uh, the movies that we're going to talk about today. Once, from what year was Once? Two thousand and seven, two thousand and thirteen's Begin Again, and two thousand and sixteen's Sing Street. He also recently uh, was one of the lead guys working on the Amazon show Modern Love and he's got a movie coming out called Russ and Roger Go Beyond which is about Roger Ebert and the other uh, film critic guy and Josh Gad and Will Ferrell are going to be in it so it's kind of kind of a change of pace for him not not a musical but a movie about people who love movies right so it's uh Josh Gad and who else Will Ferrell oh Will Ferrell yeah for uh, for a half second I thought you said Jason Russ Siegel Meyer. and I was like Russ Meyer is the other real person so josh gad is playing roger ebert so at first i thought that you said jason siegel and i was like oh that could definitely still be a musical yeah jason siegel very talented that jason siegel and josh Josh gad Gad. olaf baby Uh uh-huh also broadway tony award winner Mm -hmm. (laughs) um anyway the the movies we're going to focus on today are once uh starring the intensely talented glenn hansard and marketa irglova of my people she is a one of the Eastern European countries that my family comes from. She's from <laughs> one of them. One of them. Well, the thing They're is like, like a virtual new well, United Nations. Well, the thing is like my family is from Czechoslovakia and that doesn't exist anymore. It's like a billion countries now. So like me and Goran Dragic might share what ancestors. Is the Czech Republic? I don't know. There's the Czech Republic. Geography. And then there's like all of the, you know, uh, like where Kristaps Porzingis is from and where Luka Doncic is from and all the basketball players basically. Right. Yeah. And then begin again, starring Mark Ruffalo, Kira Knightley, Adam Levine, uh, those are the important ones. Most deaf. <laughs> uh, and then Sing Street, uh, which stars Ferdia walsh uh Jack Rayner in a really great performance, and what is her name? Lucy Boynton. I think this was like her first real project, and she absolutely kills it. Mm-hmm. Later on, she just came out last year in uh, Ryan Murphy's show, The Politician, on Netflix. Mm. She's in, and she's... Very different character. I'm actually like surprised. So I, I didn't uh, look into the IMDb's as much like, uh, and I've seen Sing Street before. So maybe that like tainted my, uh, what my idea of what the order was for yeah, when I these was, movies came out. I actually thought that Sing, Sing Street, Street was the most recent. Yeah. It was surprising. Yeah. I thought it was like the middle one. So did I. I thought Begin once. Again was it's, more recent. Like you can't really confuse once. Yeah. So we'll get into that. We'll get into that. One. Um, yeah. The, I would say the running theme of these movies is they're all they're all musicals but they're not jukebox musicals they're not yeah. the kind of musical where people are breaking out into song in an unreal way uh it's they're all musicians in some way and so it's, it's their journeys what got you excited to do this episode sing Why street did you want sing street sing street, <laughs> sing street sing street sing street sing street you've been telling me for years i like probably three or four years that yeah. i would love sing street right and it's one of those movies that it was like it was on Netflix for a while, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, I should watch that. I should watch that." And then it was off Netflix, and then right. I couldn't watch it. And then I finally just went out of my way when you know with quarantine going on, I was just, I was watching a bunch of movies that I hadn't mm-hmm. seen before, and I was like, "Sing Street, I'll just rent it." Mm-hmm. And then three days later, I rented it again. Yeah. And then last week, I bought it because I was like, "I got to stop renting it." And what that means? What you should listen to me more. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I also liked what was that? What's the movie? Hardball. What was that movie Hardball? With yeah, Kim I liked. Har- yeah. I didn't like Hardball. Was you know it was fine. It was a, it was a good movie. Yeah, yeah. This movie, like Sing Street, might be one of my all time favorite movies. Right. I absolutely adore it. Crack the top ten? Probably. I'd have to. I, that's one of those things. I hate thinking about like my all time favorite movies. It's just mm-hmm. so hard. But it might. It might, especially right now because of the way I feel about it. You know what I mean? Of course. It's, I, I'm really like that with music. Mm-hmm. I'll go through phases where like. You know, J. Cole you, is my favorite musical yeah. artist you for like a year and a half. You was, was your with, exa- For like six months. For, yeah. was, right now, I'm listening to this band called Cannons, mm-hmm. and they just make this super fucking sick, like, electro-pop vibe music, and mm-hmm. I just put it on, and I do the dishes, and I vibe out, mm-hmm. and it's great. So, like, I go through phases like that with things where it's hard to say, like, your all-time favorites versus, like, 
what are you just really into right now? Right. So Okay. So let's go right into our first category. So yeah, we've then. got a few categories that we're going to go through. Yeah. And the first one, this is going to be sort of a catch-all. Whenever we do one of these The Films Of episodes, we will talk about the person appeal, personal appeal of that filmmaker's work. So what is it about John Carney's movies that appeals to you? That appeals to me? So like, I had to really think about this because like there's a lot of positive qualities to his movies like i think they have great rhythm i think that there's like great character work um and i think that the the music is great Mm -hmm. um i think it's got great humor but i would say that like above anything else there's a sense of uh genuineness if that's a word okay uh that like sort of sings quote unquote uh throughout his movies um i don't i i i kind of get bothered by like overly like sappy Mm -hmm. um these i would say these movies are not that they're not sappy at all but they still can hack into like a very human quality and like all of these like characters can be both like a little bit tragic a little bit funny a little bit sweet Mm -hmm. um and it's just in a really realistic way to me and it, it doesn't it's very they can be very sweet characters without rubbing you the wrong way yeah i think like I agree with you completely about the the genuineness of them, the genuine quality. And I think a part of what it comes from is that he makes movies about things he really understands. Like, he was in a band. He was a vocalist and a bassist in an Irish band called The Frames with Glenn Hansard, the star of Once. Mm-hmm. So he understands, like, the lifestyle of, of a musician and the things that inspire them and the things that make their lives better and worse. And I think he really puts that into his movies. And I think the other thing that helps with that you see at the end of um, Sing Street and Begin Again. Begin Again at the end, it says, um, devoted or uh, for my brother. Mm-hmm. At the end of Sing, Sing Street, it's, it's attributed to four brothers everywhere. Mm-hmm. So he really in, brings inspiration from his own life and things that he really cares about. And that really, like you said, sings through the stories. And uh, fucking speaking of brothers, man, we have to bring up Jack Rayner's character Whoa, in Sing baby. Street. Is it, the, is it the best character of all, out of all three movies? The best, I would say The so. best performance out of all three movies is Jack Rayner's performance in mm. Sing Street. Yes, I would agree. I mean, I, w- I wouldn't even just you say... You think the Sex Pistols know how to play? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even say, just say uh, uh, performance, you know, because I, I, I just... Best character in general? About yeah. The, I, would, I mean, who knows? You can't really like separate it, you know? You, uh, yeah. Those things aren't really... Yeah, per, the performance makes so much of the exactly. character. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but man, that like that character just I heavily relate to that brings, character in a weird way too. Like I'm not like a stoner kid who still lives at home, but at the same time I'm an older brother of four siblings, some of which, you know, have done a really good job in their lives of finding their path and And it's just so weirdly memorable considering that like there isn't any crazy you know, it's it's not like he's just kind of like a He has really great a college dropout. He has older a really brother. great balance of humor and tenderness and sort of pushiness Mm -hmm. that makes him a great older brother character. And there's a, you know, besides memorable jokes, like do the sex pistols know how to play right? or, um, he will not be a problem. (laughs) (laughs) What was he listening to? Genesis. (laughs) He will not be a problem. He will not be a problem. No woman wants to sleep with a man who listens to Phil Collins. (laughs) But like, so it's like great jokes like that, but also like a really memorable, emotional dynamic mm-hmm. scene with his brother played by per- Ferdia. His name always tricks me. Is it Ferdia or Ferdia? Per diem? <laughs> his name is Ferdia Walsh Pilo. Yeah. Anyway, the younger brother, the star of the movie. But I, and he has this <clears throat> incredible scene where all of his emotions are pouring out of him and he's yelling at his brother, but he's not actually yelling at him. He's like yelling for him and he's mad at himself and he's mad at like his parents and the life that they live because his parents don't love each other and what that's done to his life and what he's trying to protect his siblings from. And he's yelling at Connor, but he isn't like the message isn't directed at Connor and it's just an incredible scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I remember back when I first recommended that movie to you, uh, it had already been maybe a year since I had seen it for Mm -hmm. the first time. And that's what stuck with me. I remember it. I remember the feelings that I got during it. I remember it ending on a very like interesting note, mm-hmm. um, which we're gonna get into yeah, most for sure. likely. For sure. Um, but like that character, a couple of his movies, I just have. stuck with me. Yeah, um, he's, it's great. I like you almost know he based the character of Brendan off his own brother. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
Um, I mean, to give you ideas of my personal appeal, so I've got them broken down into three movies. Uh, also, obviously, the music. I agree with your idea of like the genuineness of them. I love the the uh, you know the the way that he writes things for like the the the, to the notes of Four Brothers Everywhere. I think that really helps the movie. Right. I think that goes into the genuine thing. Um, I wrote down performances: Jack Rayner, Lucy Boynton. Uh, I you said humor. I think his movies are really funny, and I think they're like darkly funny at times. Oh yeah, Sing Street gets some dark humor. Mm -hmm. Lucy Boynton has several lines about like how her dad rapes her, but she makes light of it. Yeah, and it's like it's like you laugh and then you feel bad that you're laughing because yeah. of the way she delivers the line. Yeah. It's and, like it's like pretty bad when like the racist jokes are like yes, kind of like yes the least yeah like, you know like they aren't the worst jokes mm -hmm. in the movie but it's like it's a you know it's a, a a real representation of what is it 1980s Ireland right so yeah yeah uh, what else do I have on here uh, I I like that um, he never forces a love story yes uh, begin again um, once. Sing Street has a love story, but yeah, it's more natural. Like there's something about the fact that Kira Knightley and Mark Ruffalo never are intimate in any way besides emotionally. Yeah. And there's a, a very funny scene where it would have happened. They walk around New York city, listening to each other's music and they go back to her, the apartment. And then <laughs> James Corden pops out from behind the desk and he's like, Hey guys, by the way, most I've ever liked James Corden in anything is that movie. Yeah. Do you like, I, I don't, I'm, I might've just heard it from you, but apparently like James Corden's I like, I see kind that of a dick. all the time online. I, you know, I don't know any, yeah, who knows, it, but I see that all the time. But it taints my view of him. Exactly. Every time I watch it, exactly. Like, every, every, like I was watching this movie. I was like, man, this is such a, he's a so likable in this he's movie. He's so likable. He's like so charismatic mm -hmm. and talented. It's just and the, shit. the thing with James Corden is I always feel like his insertion in a movie is he's not playing a character. He's just there to make jokes. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whereas in this movie, I feel like he actually fits the billing really well. Right. Um, I also wrote Mark Ruffalo. He almost has like a Sex in the City Samantha kind of quality to him. Okay, I believe you. Like he's not like a total hoe or anything like that, but like the sort of like, uh, like he's not ashamed of himself in any way. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, I wrote down a couple other performances that I really appealed to me. Mark Ruffalo, the most recent time when we watched it together, I've seen Begin Again like four or five times. So you saw Begin Again before you saw Sing Street, right? Yeah, I've, I've saw Begin Again at least twice before I saw Sing Street. But you've Sing seen Street. Sing Street like a dozen times since, since then. then yeah. <laughs> uh, but I like there's a really understated level to Mark Ruffalo's performance that I didn't catch the first couple times. And it's a lot of it is like lingering looks and mm -hmm. body language mm -hmm. and stuff. But Mark Ruffalo is like, he's like a God tier actor. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I also wrote, just, just wrote down, Glenn Hansard is nuts. Glenn Hansard. This is the lead of once. Ah, yeah. He's completely insane. Mm -hmm. His, his vocals are crazy. And it's once is a weird project because the budget is clearly next to nothing. They don't, they aren't using actors, Glenn Hansard and the female lead Marquita something. They are just singers that mm -hmm. John Carney was like, yeah, we'll just put you in the movie because you can do the music. And right. like once almost feels like they had a sick album and they were like, let's make a movie for it. Right. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. the, the music in it is so important and so good. It does come off like more like a music video. Yes. Absolutely. Turned into a movie. Especially like the, the scene around. when, when he gives her the, 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 uh, the music and asks her to write lyrics for it. Right. That feels like a music video. She's like walking around the city and yeah. singing the, what she comes up with. Um, the other big thing I put was all of the movies that I, I think this is really interesting. They, they have a, they struggle with the line of like what the meaning of music is. I think this is especially true in begin again, because it's a real conflict for the main characters. Right. So sing street, he makes the band for the girl, right? He wants to get with the girl, so he makes a band because he told her he's in a band. And then it becomes this thing where his entire emotional pool that he puts everything in is his music. He writes music to get things off his chest. And he's supported by his brother, and, and it gets him closer to the girl. He makes these friends at this new school. All of that is through the music. This is a very pure musical movie. The music is very pure in this movie. And once... It's a struggling musician who failed, but is just so committed, and, and not even committed, but he's just, he just can't not do music. All he does is busk and help at his dad's store, and then the end of the movie is him going off to try again. And it's also like kind of a pure 
idea of what music can be and how music can bring people together. It's more bittersweet than Sing, uh, Sing Street because she's married and has a child and there's like there's this longing between them that they can't act on. Right. And there's that great scene when they're out in the woods and he says, uh, how do you say I love you in uh, like Czech or something? And she says something, but she says, she says, I love you. Right. But he doesn't know what she says. Mm-hmm. It's a really great scene. I immediately like Googled what she said. Right. Uh, but the th- cool thing about Begin Again is like Kieran Knightley's character and Mark Ruffalo's character are so devoted to the purity of music, something that the other two movies kind of celebrate. And there's like Kieran Knightley is like stubborn to the point of she refuses any level of performativeness, any level of entertainment to sacrifice for her music. Does that make sense? Right. And Mark Ruffalo supports that. He thinks the music industry has gone in a direction that is bad for music. Whereas, on the other hand, Adam Levine, who is, he's like a sympathetic villain in the movie. He's taken her really gorgeous song and really personal, intimate song that she wrote for him. And he completely, like, butchers it. Like, the way they sing it is insane. But the thing that, like, hurts this message for me, and I think, I don't know if this is intentional or if this is just my reading of it, But the final scene of the movie of Begin Again almost feels to me like John Carney saying, you have to compromise. You have to find the middle ground between what people like and what you love. And you have to create something for everyone. Really? Because the way Adam Levine performs the song at the end of the movie is an amalgam of her version and his version. Mm -hmm. And it's the best song in the movie. Right. That is the best song in the movie. And... That might just be my opinion on it. I think Lost Stars is an incredible song, and the, right. and the final performance of it is awesome. It's nominated for an Oscar. Right. Um, it might not be. It's up. So like, if I were to make like a top five, John Carney. We'll get to that later. We'll get to the songs later. I'll get into my song spiel. Yeah. But like that moment, because that moment is so. It's all like that scene is one decision away from being a star is born. It's her walking out on stage with him and singing it with yeah, him. And yeah. then it's A Star is Born. Yeah. But she is, she's, she, she realizes that Mark Ruffalo was right about Adam Levine and that he is a rock star and he didn't know it yet. And he'd never be able to make her happy. Right. Because he's always going to put himself into everything. The way he puts himself into that song and makes the song better. But it's this, and then she leaves and the movie ends. And I just think it's a really interesting idea about like, what music is and what music can be and what music should be. And I really like that. Yeah. I didn't really like get the, uh, the compromise thing from it. You know, uh, like to me, it was just the difference between like, it, it, to me, that was Adam Levine going, you know, like as, uh, like, like to quote, like a, a star is born as, as deep as he could, as unshallow mm-hmm. yeah. as he could. Um, I mean, because it was really just him and a guitar. And there's a band. Voice. There's a backing band. And, and then the band comes in yeah. later, right? That's what I'm saying. It that, comes in like halfway well, through. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why the scene builds so yeah. well. It starts out, and he he dedicates the song, or he gives the whole spiel to the mm-hmm. crowd, and he's like, "There's a really important person here." But it's definitely not here, a stadium anthem. And she's sure, and she's yeah. really special to me, and I I wanted to come up here and play the song because she wrote yeah. it, and I love it, and I want her to see her version of it true. And he does it for half the song, and then the band comes in and it builds, and he's. Right doing the Adam Levine high register thing, whereas her version of it is subdued and intimate. And both versions are cool, but his version is like fucking sick. Do you have, so you you named all of these things uh, mm-hmm. that have uh, appealed to you. Is yeah. there like one reigning idea? If you had to choose one? You might've hit the nail on the head. I didn't think of it in the terms of, of the genuineness right. of it. Um. I think the other thing would just be the through line of great music. Right. Music reflecting story, I would mm-hmm. say. Yeah. The music reflects the story in a way that a lot of yeah. musicals don't the story do. story and, and, yeah. and just the journey of the characters. Yeah. Like, I mean, Which, I what, couldn't have gone on that though. spiel about the song Star, uh, Lost Stars if the music wasn't reflecting the characters and the stories in a good way. <clears throat> so I think that would probably be mine. Yeah, yeah. The <clears throat> music reflecting uh, the story, the characters, uh, what it means to the characters mm-hmm. and how it integrates like with, with everyone's problems and fucking how they're getting over and their ideals. problems. Yeah. Um, fucking, so we're going to move on to the next category, mm-hmm. right? Move on to signature moves. Yeah. 
So this would be like the Allen Iverson crossover. Okay. <laughs> The, so it's Christopher the, Nolan spin shot. This would be the sky hook, right? This would be the Christopher Nolan uh, spin shot. Uh, the Peyton Manning Omaha. This would be the uh, Aaron Sorkin uh, walk and talk. The Barry Sanders jump cut. <coughs> good, good example. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good that was. It made me start to <clears throat> But yeah, like if... Uh, Do we have a hockey example we can use? Because I don't know no. anything about hockey. I don't know. Right. Somebody's slap shot? I don't know. <laughs> o- Ovechkin, does Ovechkin have a slap I shot, I guess? Um, yeah, but these are the, uh, yeah, the signature moves of John Carney. I have a bunch of weird ones. I have a lot too. Right. Uh, do you want to just, we can make a list of nominations and then we can sort of settle into the ones we think are the best. I mean, all of mine are kind of silly. <laughs> give it to me. Give <laughs> yeah, it to me. So, all right. So I'm going to go through all my silly. Most of them are between once and sing street, <laughs> right? I didn't think For about whatever that. reason. You and once and, S- and sing once and sing street both have like Small plot lines revolving around Hoover vacuums. Yeah. Uh, it's in so Sing weird. Street, he sings into one in a recorder for a voice uh-huh. effect. And then once he works at a vacuum store, yeah. his dad. Yeah, and they're both, it's like, they're not just vacuums. They're Hoover, Hoover vacuums. vacuums. Yeah. Well, I, I think that might be because British and Irish people call vacuums Hoovers. Oh, is that a thing? I, maybe. Oh, I maybe. don't know. They call Kinda parking like lots co- car parks. And they call cookies biscuits. Exactly. Weird. Um, yeah, uh, another one. Uh, Parents bringing in tea while there's a montage of yeah. uh, everyone uh, making music. It's pretty British. Yeah. Again, but British it's always Irish. like yeah. there's always that one shot yeah, of the music bringing in on, tea. Yeah. Uh, fucking characters named Avon. So a- Avon. I looked into this. He had a friend mm-hmm. named Avon in his Makes youth sense. that had rabbits. All from his real. That's what we're getting into the genuine thing again. Yeah. All this. Just the, bases everything off his Avon, life. Eamon is like my, he, so you know how you always are like, you don't, you never want to say Harry Potter is your favorite character. Right. You want to say that like Lee Jordan or some weird yeah. random ass character is your favorite character uh-huh. in a story. Eamon is that for me from yeah. Sing Street. I love Eamon. He is this just consistent figure of joy mm-hmm. in Connor's life. And he's funny and he's sensationally talented. The mm-hmm. dude plays like every instrument known to man. And he's just always there for Connor and he's just like, I love the scene when Connor shows them the poster for the disco or whatever they call it. And he's like, we've got exams to worry about. And Connor's like, who cares about exams? You know, we got it. We need a deadline. And he's like, will, there, will girls be there? And he's like, yeah. He's like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> just instantly changes Yeah, his instantly chin. changes his mind. It's great. Uh, yeah, so characters named Eamon, both in Once and Sing Street, right? Yeah, the other one, great Fucking, too, the recording studio guy who realizes they're really good in the middle of the song and takes it seriously. <laughs> Uh, fucking characters uh, that so yep. male, the male leads stealing their parents' vehicles mm-hmm. in order to impress a girl. And yes, once it happens with the motorcycle, yep. and in Sing Street, it happens uh, with the boat, and then wanting to go to London, mm-hmm. which I think is the British Irish equivalent of going to New York City or right. Los Angeles, yeah, or LA, so, yeah. right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, you have that. You have uh, fucking musicians getting their shit stolen. <laughs> yep. Uh, and yep. the one that we've sort of already danced Very around. funny open to once with uh, the stuff, get, the money getting stolen. The only one that I could really think of with Begin Again uh, that like he did multiple times uh, was with Once in Begin Again. And that's just the bittersweet romance. Mm-hmm. How like you kind of think that these two characters are going to end there's up together. Definitely, they don't. There's definitely connection between the characters, but it never becomes a physical thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's an intimacy there that is never acted upon. And it's really interesting. And ma- it makes like for for uh, a good tension in a story. Mm-hmm. Um, mine are, I think, less silly than yours. So I, by movie, I went through um, signature moves in Sing Street. I wrote down representing the spirit of rock and roll, uh, sort of like espousing on it. And that goes through Brendan's character a lot of the right. way he talks about music and the way he loves music. This goes with all of them, which is going to be my nomination for the signature move of John Carney. And that is capturing the spark of creative collaboration every single movie has a scene where one or more musicians or two or more musicians are in some way working together to create a piece of art and he spends long lingering shots capturing these moments it's Eamon and Connor writing Riddle of the Model it's Eamon and Connor writing I think it's it's up and then transitioning into the tracking shot of the band in the living room as they show up and keep playing it. It's once when they go to the piano store and play Falling Slowly together and they harmonize for the first time. It's in Begin Again 
when Keira Knightley is playing on stage alone and Mark Ruffalo imagines the arrangement with the band playing without any people, this, the instruments just start playing themselves in an arrangement that he imagines being produced for the song. It's all of these things. I think that is that to me is his ultimate signature move. Mm-hmm. The, this, the capturing the moment where creative collaboration happens. Um, what else do I have? Uh, I think there's a level of, this is mostly Sing Street, I think, but there's a, there's a level of non-reality to every musical scene. And it's especially true with, um, it's obvious in uh, Drive It Like You Stole It because that's like purposefully done that way. And it's ambiguous in the final scene. Right. Uh, I don't know if it's, if the, the musical scenes are like that in the other movies. I don't think they are. They're much more on the surface. But there's a level of like, Every time that Sing Street, the band, is playing together, are they actually this good, or is this just how it makes Connor feel? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <clears throat> um, what else do I have? Another really important one that I think goes through all of them is uh, using music to, as it, um, we kind of touched on this, as emotional expression and as a way of communication. So this is really big in Begin Again. Adam Levine tells Keira Knightley he cheated on her by playing a song, and she immediately knows it. Which, when the first time you watch it, you're like, "What? Wait, yeah, why is she How so angry?" How did she know that? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Connor is doing it throughout the whole movie. Every song is written for Rafina. Mm-hmm. Every song, and you know the the scenes that are often intercut with them playing the music and her listening to it in her room, taking her makeup off on makeup off and crying. Those are really hard hitting scenes to me. And then they do it again a bit in once but I don't think it's as uh, important in that one mm-hmm. um, the only other thing I think he tends to linger on with the camera on scenes when there's music happening I think he's, he does really long shots of performances he doesn't do a lot of like cutting and no. stuff like that when he's doing performances no. but my number one choice would be that mo- catch, capturing that the spark of creative collaboration. Yeah. I think that's in every one of the movies, and I think it really stands out in those movies. And the, yeah, and they're usually the best scenes. Yeah. And I think secondarily would be the way that he always uses music. This kind of ties personal appeal and signature move together, but he always uses music as a way that the comer- characters emote and communicate. Right. Yeah, the the scene with Mark Ruffalo when he's uh, seeing Keira mm-hmm. Knightley perform for the first time and he's drunk off his ass and he sees all of the instruments playing themselves and everything, that actually reminds me a lot of the scene in Sing Street uh, that was a lot, that was super uh, amb- ambiguous. <clears throat> At the end of? No, not the, not the end where they're in the boat, but like I'm talking about uh, when Connor is uh, playing in the school auditorium. Right. Oh, you're driving imagined, like you stole it. So when he's imagining like he everything, he he's like imagining what the video would look like yeah, if it exactly. was made the way he wanted. And then it's like, and it's not even just the video, but it's like, well, it's the video. It's his dream it's, sequence. It's his video. It's it's his. It's the video he wants to make the '50s high school American dance mm-hmm. combined with if everything in my life went right. Because there would be like. Yeah, if everything in my life went right is like the way I is want it to closer happen. to because like obviously it would be a really cool music video, but if you shot that music video and there's yeah. just like a random guy coming getting in, getting in a knife of, fight, <laughs> like the knife fight would be fine, but the fact that like you know the like, priest like who the, cartwheels, <laughs> yeah, you'd be like who the fuck is this guy giving like a thumbs up, yeah. like is that Jack Rayner? What is going on? <laughs> yeah, with the you know, with Jack Rayner. If you didn't know hair. that it was his brother and like yeah. the things that were going on, exactly. you know, uh, in, that were involved with the story, like it is his dream sequence. Sequence. He wants that to actually be yes. happening. Yes. Um, it's That's a, a really that might be my favorite scene in that movie. That scene's really affecting because, like, when it ends, it's like a very fun moment, and the the video is fun, and all this kind of weird stuff is happening, and then it and the song is great, and then it ends, and it's just like five high school kids that suck at dancing right in the auditorium with them and he's like awful and she and she awful. doesn't show up and how good he's do they just, have to be at dancing in real life in order to do to dance that bad on i don't know camera? <laughs> like how can you not just because they were like pretty <laughs> consistently bad across yeah, the board yeah. i don't know man that was rough he even tricks you within that scene john carney the way he directs oh, it so. the way he shoots the way he cuts it well he starts the music and he shows the high school kids being bad at dancing and they start playing the song. And you think that and he's he cutting to the to actual the door dance. opening yeah. and she walks in in the dress yeah. and you think she's, she showed up and you're right. like, yes, yeah, she's there. And then as you pan in, you notice the auditorium is full of these people and you're like, oh no, this is Connor's imagination. That's a really good example of like uh, someone 
uh, who's made a couple movies, you know, and is using the audience's uh, experience with film mm-hmm. against them. Yeah, you and know, their expectations. It's very easy to like just go from the the practice, you know, sequence or whatever, mm-hmm. like them just fooling around in the auditorium and practicing to going into the actual dance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's not what happens. Nope. <clears throat> Um, what what would be your vote for the number one uh, signature move? Number one signature move? Hoover vacuums, obviously. <laughs> That's such a weird thing. That's such a weird thing to just Every incorporate. Movie. That's so funny. Um, all right, let's jump to. All right, I got another spiel for the. I feel like I'm spieling a lot, but I, I'm very passionate. I yeah, really love these movies. This is a very movies. spiely episode. For I you. really love these movies. Um, I also just, just love. Wait until we I love do, musicals. So like, <laughs> just wait until we do an episode on Steven Spielberg. And then you could spiel on spiel. Could, yeah. Can we Start call it that? On the spiel on spiel. No, we're definitely not. <laughs> uh, all right. We're going to talk spell. about our favorite song. So every time we do a films of episode, we're going to talk about the personal appeal of the director's films. And we're going to talk about their signature moves. Mm-hmm. If when we do Quentin Tarantino, we're going to talk about a trunk shot. But when we talk about Quentin Tarantino, we're not going to do favorite song. That would make no sense. There'd be a couple movies you could, Maybe throw something you in. You do like best it, music. You, be, do like, you could do best music, yeah. but best favorite song. There's a very we're musical, not going to do that. musical we centric uh, category here. So we're going to talk about our favorite songs from these three John Carney movies. Right. And I did got you thoughts. break them down? I got thoughts from movie to movie to movie. I, I have them listed ahead, by movie. I want to know. No, I want to know yours first. I want to know what you. Oh, to okay. Well, I was just going to take a nap real quick while you go into the. <laughs> um, no, dude. I so it's weird because I almost have like a, a different favorite um that like outside of watching the movies that i would like to listen to okay you know that's completely like, reasonable to right me. So, but like when i'm watching the movies like it appeals to me in a different way so the uh falling slowly and once mm-hmm. hits me really hard when i'm watching the song's it, incredible right uh fucking lifts me up in Jeez. sing street uh that hits me really hard when i'm watching it but like when i try to listen to it to both of those songs outside of the movies themselves, they don't appeal to me really as much. That's interesting. As something uh, like fucking uh, drive it like drive you stole it. Like it. You stole it. Drive Which it, is you just, stole it. Just it's fucking because rocks. it's a hollow notes groove, dude. Yeah, it's it just fired rocks. by hollow notes and it grooves out. Yeah, it's a and, great groove out. Song. And probably Lost Stars. I think that Lost Stars is probably, regardless, like the best song out okay. of any of. The, I think Falling Slowly might actually be the best song. Yeah, I think it I, might. Be. I think that's completely yeah. fair. So yeah. Falling Slowly did win the Oscar for best original song, and Lost mm-hmm. Stars didn't. Right. But it was nominated. That's a good so point. based on, but you that know, a good point. Lost Stars also was up against the song from Selma that had a lot of like, uh, very um, what's the word I'm looking yeah, for? Yeah, like good luck, re- Adam Levine. Relevant, uh, like political discourse behind it. Right. So it was like you know, it had a, it was a, it was going up against a real beast, and it had John Legend in common behind it. So mm-hmm. really powerful creative collaboration there. Yeah. Uh, so no shame in not beating it out. Although like I like Lost Stars as a song more than that song from Selma. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I will go through this. I'll do Sing Street last. Once. Falling Slowly is the best song in the movie. It might be the best song in all three movies. It's the only one that's... It's the only Oscar winner in the whole discussion. All three movies. Uh, the other great song is Once uh, When Your Mind's Made Up, which is the scene when they get into the recording studio and Eamon realizes they're really good and halfway through the song or a quarter of the way through the song and you're like, Glenn Hansard is just going absolutely bananas and her harmonies with him are just disgustingly sick. That song is really good. A lot of the music in Once is is high quality but not like you're talking about. Like, they're not jams. You know what I mean? You're not going to jam mm-hmm. to the Once soundtrack the way you are to the Sing Street soundtrack. Right. That being said, Begin Again the biggest fault, in my opinion, of Begin Again is that Kira Knightley's music isn't likable enough. Thank Are you me. with me? Yes. I, I, like, I, we, we're probably going to get into this when we do Best and Least Best, but like, I think that her casting in that movie was... I like Kira Knightley. I'm not sure if she was the she, best person. She brings it as an actor really well. Yeah. Her scenes with Mark Ruffalo in terms of acting and character I, are great. That didn't bother me but at all. It, the music is just so like mellow. Underwhel- it's it's like, underwhelming. It's yeah. underwhelming. Yeah. And, and like, you're supposed to be recognizing the great songwriter that she is and the lyrics. Like if you listen to the songs, they are, they're really well-written songs and the music is cool, but it's, they're just so kind of mellow and chill. And you're just like this, like, I, I wish that we had a, a better 
singing performance mm. to put some oomph behind these songs. The, that well, I think like a, uh, so we brought up a Star Is Born earlier. Oh my I god! Constantly. Oh thought my god! Shadow. Of so I constantly thought of a Star Is Born while I was watching uh, Begin Again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have that same thing, but like there was just so many scenes where, and I know that they're different movies mm -hmm. and they yeah, they're exist very on their own accord. I like a Star Is Born way more. That's than yeah. I, do well, I mean that Begin makes sense. Again. A Star Is Born uh, is a better movie and. You also have, you know, Lady Gaga singing those songs yes. instead of Kira Knightley. Oh, 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 oh. Did Kira Knightley sing? She does sing. Yeah, she had to learn to play guitar for the movie. Okay, okay. But she enough. just has like a very, you know, uh, kind of effervescent voice. It's very just. She sings really lightly. You know, well, it just it, it, it kind of uh, undercuts a little like a lot of the scenes for me, at least when, I, you know, you see Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo's going on. He's like jumping up and getting down. Really and he's like, excited. He's like, he's like, big here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for, you know, th this musical talent that he just discovered. Yes. And it's kind of like, oh, like that being said, like, you're this, you know, I like when, it's, it's weird when you're watching the scenes. You're like, you know, you bob your head. You're like, OK. When Haley Steinfeld, the song that she plays guitar on, you're like, this yeah. is cool. It's a cool like family moment between her and Mark Ruffalo and they're mm -hmm. jamming out. Yeah. And then you hear fucking Lost Stars at the end and you're like, oh, so, you know, Adam, you know, obviously he's the, he's the most talented musical performer in this movie. Uh, there are moments though, like I think uh, her song Coming Up Roses is really good. And I think the video or the the video, the message recording is actually really good. That's a, that's a good when scene. she sings like a fool to him on on his mm -hmm. voice message on yeah. his phone, and James Corden is playing piano behind her, and then right. he plays the kazoo, and she yeah. gets mad at him. But it's also like it's, it's also the only f bomb in the movie, and it's used really well. It's the construction of the scene as yes, well, and exactly. like and the story that is behind it. It's not more about than it's not about the performance, the music of that. itself. It's about yeah. the message exactly. Mm -hmm. Now let's get to the important part: <laughs> the music of Sing Street. And what is and is not the best song. Whew. This is tough. So. Riddle of the Model is the first song they do. It's good. It's a good song. It's not the best song. The Riddle of the Model. Their concert. They play three songs. They play Girls. Which is inspired by a, a line that his teacher said to him in art class. Good song. Not the best song. It's fun. It's fine. They sing the slow song to find you. Good song. They do a different version of it in the movie than they do on the soundtrack. If you listen to it on Spotify, the soundtrack on really? Spotify has like a fully produced version with strings and stuff. Oh, okay. In the movie, I actually like it more because it's more stripped down. It's just him and, a, and Eamon's guitar and Eamon on piano. I like it. Not the best song. Then they do Brown Shoes, which is this sort of anthemic collection of everything he's been through in the movie and him giving the middle finger to the priest who runs the school. Right. Cool moment, not the best song. Also, rock and roll is fuck. Yeah, rock it's, and roll is fuck. Yeah. They got the masks. Cool song, cool moment. Still not the best song. That being said, to all four of those songs, them not being in the conversation for best song speaks to how dope the music is in this movie. Exactly. Because they're all good songs. Up. She lights me up. The song you're talking about. Mm -hmm. She lifts me up. That song is the best representation of his voice. When the chorus kicks in in that song, yeah, his voice is fucking golden. Right, that register on him, it's like his head voice. It's it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's a great, 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 great song. Beautiful C, I think the best chorus overall. This girl is a beautiful C. Like that whole chorus is really good. Also, I like that scene in the movie a lot. So like whenever I listen to that song, I think of that scene mm -hmm. and like when she jumps in the water and she tells him, "You can never sacrifice." your art and, right. and then he kisses her and she's like, Oh, fair play. I just love that scene. Mm -hmm. And then drive it. Like you stole it is just the ultimate groove. The groove on drive it. Like you stole it is so good. And the, you know, every song throughout this movie is inspired by records that his brother gives him. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like ripoffs of other musical acts. Right. This one is Hall and Oates, well, like, which what were the, the ones that he brought up. So I don't like, remember like, all of them. Riddle of the Model is Duran Duran. Yeah. Duran Duran. Um, I think beautiful sea is the cure. That's the happy, sad response. Yes. yes. Um, which happy sad is like a huge theme through that movie and yeah. what it means. Hall Notes is obviously Hall Notes is drive it like you stole it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of why that song is so good is because Hall Notes is the shit. <laughs> <laughs> the last one in the discussion, Connor does not sing. And that is go now sung by Adam Levine again. Right. The thing I love about this song, the thing, first of all, the thing I hate about this song is that it's not on Spotify. Drives me nuts. The fuck Spotify. It's just on there and it, you can't like click on it. Like not even as like a single or anything. It's on there and you can't click on it. It sucks. That oh, it's like said, grayed out? Yeah, it's grayed out. Weak. 
Yeah, so there's some sort of there's some fucking inside Lewin Davis. Yeah, there's rights issues or something. I don't know. Whack. Anyway, the thing that is great about that song, besides it being just a really good song, that really ties up a bow on the themes of the movie, it sounds like what the character of Connor could sound like later on in his life if he got a record deal and made an album. It also sounds like it could be one of the songs that Brendan handed him before he left Ireland. So I just, there's just it's such... It's not much, it's just a thought of consciousness. Stream stuff. of consciousness stuff, yeah. you know? And, and, the, and the song is about how important it is to chase your dreams. So it sounds like Brendan's message to Connor. And it sounds like a potential of Connor's voice down line. And I just love the way that it ties everything together. And on top of that, in the movie... It's over this like weird, almost like a fantasy sequence at the end of that movie. It's a very strange kind of turn change of pace. The, I don't know between those four what my favorite is in the yeah, movie. It's like almost like something out of like a, a, an adventure movie. Yeah, exactly. Almost, they almost know? get hit by a yeah, uh, the ferry that goes yeah, to London. There's some, and there's some weird the rain special starts pouring there, down. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That that kind of feels like another his his ambition was higher than his budget moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, between. All of those, I could easily make a top six, but the number one would be really hard to do. I don't know. You don't know what they were? I don't know. But I, I just think the discussion of the the things about the Sing Street music I mean, and how good it is. I think that we should bring this up as well, I mean, because it's just so inherent to musicals, period, is mm-hmm. that you can't really like... Uh, the experience that you have while watching the movie is not mutually exclusive from the music itself when exactly. you listen to it later. When you know? I listen to Beautiful Sea, I think of the happy, sad conversation, right. and I think of the feelings that are elicited and why Connor wrote mm-hmm. that music yeah. and the way it made Rafina feel and all of these things. And, it's, and, it's and it makes just, the song better. Yeah, exactly. Like you think of the story and everything. You think of these characters that you really enjoyed and the, the moments that you've had with them, mm-hmm. right, while, while you're watching this movie. But it's it's not just with musicals either, right? Yeah. Like every time that I listen to the Social Network soundtrack, yeah. I think of specific shots or specific moments, mm-hmm. you know, that happened throughout Mark's life. Yeah, when I listen to the first track from Social Network, mm-hmm. I can see him running through the Harvard campus. Yeah. I can see it in my... Yeah. His it, fucking, it's like I'm looking at His it. fucking slides yes. flipping and yes. flopping <laughs> underneath his feet. Exactly. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, I think Beautiful Sea might be my favorite song from Sing Street. Really? I think it might be. Really? It might be. I'm, I, I can't commit to it, but I'll say for now. Well, the, our audience is going to scurry you. Well, that's I can okay. Already, that's okay. I can already tell you that. It. And then I think either Lost Stars or Falling Slowly is the best song overall, mm-hmm. but it's tough. I'm, I might lean Lost Stars like you, but I'm also like, I really like Adam Levine's music, so <laughs> fair. <laughs> I'm a fair. Maroon 5 fan. Like Fair. That I'll get skewered for that more than I will for not making a decision about. No, I like Rune Five as well. Fuck yeah. it. I also like Nickelback. Ew! There you go. I'll, Looking I'll, right at the five camera. seconds. Five seconds of silence. I like Nickelback. <laughs> All right. You want to jump to our final category? We will. Okay. So you just talked about how. Uh, uh, Lost Stars is potentially the best song out mm-hmm. of all three. Mm-hmm. What do you think is uh, the the? Should we do least best? Or best movie. Let's just get the, the best group. out of the way because I think we both know the answer. It's Sing Street. It's Sing Street. Sing Street's the best movie he's made. Yeah. Best it's movie also, out of the like, three. It Street. makes sense because he made once. He obviously learned a lot about filmmaking, making that movie. Then he it was good enough that he got the budget to make another movie right. with real actors and stars and he made Begin Again. And then he could really pursue something that really feels personal and like his own real vision in Sing Street and it really, really works. And it's almost like once was in a way like his practice movie yes. for Sing Street, you yes. know, like he was just able to nail all of these uh, uh, things that he was trying to hit with once mm-hmm. uh, better in other movies. That being said, though, I will say that his least best movie is Begin Again. I so I, I get where you're coming from. But I disagree. I think as a movie, once is not as high is not as quality, right. and the budget is probably a big reason for that. Right. I think beginning is a better movie than once. Right. I think the music in once is better than begin again. Fair. Fair. E- except for Lost Stars. Right. <clears throat> I definitely enjoyed once more than I enjoyed Begin Again. Oh wow. Okay. Right. I I, I think that like well, we were talking about before, the casting of Kara Knightley just kind of undercut a lot of the scenes mm-hmm. and a lot of the I don't know. The, yeah, the I, I would love to see if that there. movie made with. I mean, I don't know who, 
but just like someone that was more of like an emphatic singer right. than her. Because mm-hmm. her, like I said, like her stuff when she's just acting is great. I mean, like imagine if it were like a Jennifer Hudson or something like that, you know? Like that might somebody, be too much. She's a beast. Is that too good? She's a beast. Good? You'd probably be like, okay, how the fuck didn't she already have a <laughs> yeah, deal? Yeah. That's like the opposite of the Keira Knightley vibe. The right. singer-songwriter vibe would be Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. Oh, um, man. But yeah, like I just... Uh, you just you want to... In the songs, you want to hear him go up. You want to hear him go for it, mm-hmm. which Glenn Hansard does all the time in once. That dude just pipes out. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I would say once... He's probably the most talented musician than... in all the movies. Really? Oh, yeah. He probably, I, I would say he's a better singer than Adam Levine is. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Like, if you listen to Adam Levine sing live, he's fine. He's good. But, like, he sounds much better produced than he does live. Oh. Maybe Glenn I'm, Hansard, though, that dude's wild. Maybe I haven't listened to him live enough, then. Glenn Hansard is wild. Because when I hear that fucking falsetto in Lost oh, Stars. Oh, yeah, I'm it's like, amazing. It's incredible. But, like, the fullness that it has when it's produced on a track is different than doing it live. Yeah, like, that's fair enough. Adam Levine thins out a little bit live. Wait, well, and uh, Adam Hansard? Is that his Glenn name? Glenn Hansard. Glenn Hansard. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Levine? Yo, combine <laughs> them. That'd be sick. <laughs> um, he definitely has like a lot more like soul. He's got and, like, gravitas in his yeah, voice, Yeah, like, the, yeah. The, the, uh, there's like a lot more like, he's got more nuts. Yeah, he's got more yeah, nuts yeah. in his voice. He's got gusto. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The boy, that man got gusto. Yeah. Um, than Adam Levine does mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, so there's there's differences. Yeah, to it's like voices. the opening scene of Once. They and immediately they're the, both fucking amazing. Once opens on a long shot from across the street of of Glenn Hansard busking and yeah. singing the song "Say It to Me Now," and it's like John Carney's goal was to slap you across the face with how good this dude is at singing. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, now that you get it, we'll get into the movie a little bit. So like, how? Go- so he already had a pre-existing relationship with Adam. Yeah, they were in a band together, uh, right? Uh, before the last, but but uh, before Begin Again was made, but that casting of of Adam Levine. Oh, you're talking about John Carney and Adam Levine. Yes, John they Carney created. No, Levine. they they worked together for the first time on Begin Again, and then Sing Street was after that. Oh yeah, that's right. I yes. keep fucking up. Yes. So, so, all right. So how like choice do you think Adam Levine was for that cast? I thought it was great. I I've agree. seen a lot of stuff like. On reviews and online, I wouldn't people, say he's the greatest actor. But people, but people like, are like, like he's a, a, but people are like he's shit in the movie, and I'm like, no, he's, he's fine. Not distractingly, bad, he's fine. It's perfectly fine. Right? Like, like I actually think there's playing moments, a musician. There's you know, moments like, where he's pretty solid. Like I think when he, when he, when she slaps him and then he leaves the room and he comes back with his tail tucked between his legs, right. I think he does a really good job there. Yeah. And he's like, how the fuck did you know that? You're like right. a mind reader. I think he really does a good job with that yeah. scene. Yeah. Like I don't think that he's, he's but distractingly, yeah, distractingly bad. He's never distractingly bad. He's but, he's just being Adam Levine. But like hearing Adam Levine talk about uh, selling out <laughs> about selling out is just a really it's funny. fun. Yeah. Well, have you ever heard his like real life quotes about that shit? Yeah. Like, he's just like, yeah, he's like, I don't give a fuck. Dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to make music and have fun. Like <laughs> if I get rich on the way, that's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really like Adam Levine. Like, I think he's a cool guy. I think he's a, like a, like, and like this might just be cause I watched the voice right. and like, I don't think of him as like this weird, like, I feel like a lot of people just like hate him because he's a rock star. You know well, what I mean? And it's just like, there's just so much hate that yeah. can, it's, it's like the hate he that takes p- his shirt off and has tattoos. I, th- I think that he gets a lot of like, this guy has big dick hate. You know what I mean? Well, it's, like, it's similar to the Pete Davidson hate. I feel like we talk about a little bit like the, not personality wise, but sort Pete of Davidson like, it's kind of different though, because like, he's not super attractive or anything that's like true. that. I don't like, like, has not Adam Levine like, like been sexiest man in the world before? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I think he has. I don't keep track of those things. I know Blake Shelton was one. He year. was. Um, he was, but he's uh, tall, dude. But you know, like when you see someone that's like talented and they fuck, they got a supermodel wife yeah. and you know, they're really good looking. It's like, jealousy. They just have all the, yeah. Like yeah. people, people behave. But yeah, I, so, oh man. Yeah. I had a hard time deciding what was least best because what was best is obvious, but I think the, the combination of the budgetary issues to overcome. And I just felt there were moments throughout once where it was lulling for me where I was just like, okay. I think like it's basically like the this uh the second act. I'm kind of like in which movie? In once. Right. Where I feel I always feel entertained watching Begin Again. Mm. And a lot of that is just you know, Mark Ruffalo is always entertaining. Yeah, there's you know also I mean? like a more like a plethora of characters. Exactly. Yeah. You're and dealing with that his, you know. Yeah, you're dealing with Mark Ruffalo as a father with Haley Steinfeld yeah. and the 
the the, the his the wife who is from Forty Year Old Virgin, yeah. and you're dealing with Kira Knightley and her relationships and their relationship with each other, and you're you're getting to know all the band. And CeeLo Green shows up, and yeah. Adam like, Levine is shit, in it. CeeLo Green. Yeah, you're like, well, there's wait, a lot. hold on, is that most deaf? Like, yeah, what? exactly. Uh, whereas in once there's like lulls in the story to me a little bit where I think they, I, th- I think he learned pacing through the making of the movie. And I think begin again shows that he got a little better at it. And then I think sing street, you're like, this dude has learned how to really yeah. make a movie. Uh, yeah. I, I'll actually agree with that. that like beginning again is probably a better movie. Yeah. But I, I enjoy but you once like more. once more. That's I, completely I like reasonable. once more because I feel like the, uh, I don't know. I, I think that the characters are so much more uh, intriguing to me. Like I, like I okay. can be drawn into. I also think there's like, I think the female lead of once like for not being an actor, she's good. You and, know what I mean? Kind of like Adam Levine, not right. distractingly bad situation. And, but I don't think that she, like Marquita Ikalova, I keep forgetting her name. Right. Like I think that there was a lot that she could have brought to that performance if there was an, if it was an right. actual actor. Right. But yeah, that, yeah, that's fair. But there's also like, uh, I don't know, there's a quality uh, with Once, especially because it was such a cheap movie yeah. and it looks so shitty yeah. that like it almost has this like cinema verite quality mm-hmm. to it, you know, like where like I almost feel like I'm uh, watching like a Godard movie or something mm-hmm. like that. Like, uh, and Begin Again, it just seems it's it's more polished. You know, you see like all of these uh, actors that you've seen before, yes. you know, celebrities and stuff like that. So it's just, and it doesn't have the kind of uh character and uh consistent Mm -hmm. tone and uh like deft maneuverability as sing street has yeah sing street is where he puts everything together he takes the best parts of both movies exactly and makes a great movie Mm -hmm. i'm glad we did this (laughs) everybody watch sing street it's so good i'm glad that you finally watched it and you really enjoyed it man me too yeah now i'm like it's weird because I think like should I watch Modern Love on Amazon this TV show he made yeah. with like Anne Hathaway and random Tina Fey and another random I'd Is like it a musical no I don't, know, I don't know anything about no that. and then I'm like do I care about his Roger Ebert movie if it's not a musical like, <laughs> I don't know I don't want to like be like I don't want to ever be a person who tells someone they can't do something you know what I mean I want as many Donald Glovers in the world as possible you know like if you are an actor and you want to make music right try it. But it's like, also like, how excited are you going to be if Jack, uh, John Carney makes a documentary? Yeah, you know? but at the same time, if that's his vision, I don't want to stop him. Like, yeah. if I told every athlete to stop rapping, Arian Foster would never have become Bobby Fino, who I think makes actually great music, right? really good music. Whereas then there's like the Damien Lillards of the world who are like, you're good for an athlete. You know what I mean? You're good for a, you're good for a basketball player. And then there's like the even trasher ones who are just like, why are you even doing this Lonzo mm-hmm. Ball? Like, what are you doing? Right. Dude, fucking like half of the Orlando Magic has an album. Yeah, now. exactly. It's, it sucks. There's it a sucks. there's a very funny joke in Game of Zones where Damian Lillard sings a song and they're like, "Oh, uh, that's not bad, Dame. Uh, it's you know for a bard, it's it's decent, but for a player, it's great." <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody goes, "That Victor Oladipo though, he's great for a bard." <laughs> um, yeah. Are we doing Quentin next? We're doing Quentin next. Yeah. And I'm that'll take some a lot of work. That's going to take some work. Right? I got categories. I got to watch like half his catalog that we'll I haven't seen before. Watch them together because I have all the Blu-rays yeah. and shit like that. Yeah, that's a lot more movies and a lot of movies I haven't mm-hmm. seen. Yeah, should we? I mean, are we going to do every Quentin Tarantino movie? I don't know. Do we'll figure it out. We will talk about the films we, of Quentin we've Tarantino. We've already done uh, Once Upon a Time. Once Time, yeah. In Hollywood, so we probably like leave that out. We might mention it. We'll definitely we mention, mention it. it. Yeah. It's it exists. The movie's great. It was okay. You need to stop Was right it now. once, though? Yes, it was much better than I'm once. I'm laughing, guys. I'm laughing. Once upon a time yeah, I get in it. Hollywood is better than mm-hmm. once. Okay. Oh, by the way, didn't mention this, but once was turned into a Broadway play, and Sing Street is also being turned into a Broadway play. Pretty cool. Uh, fucking, you know what I want to see in a Broadway play? Hamilton. Fucking Inglorious Bastards. Give me that in a that would be crazy. Broadway play. Yo, just give me that with the same cast. What, what what fucking uh, uh, round table was it? I, I think where like David O. Russell fucking was uh, uh, him and Quentin Tarantino mm-hmm. and like I think Ben Affleck and a couple other directors. Um, this wasn't in the year that Argo won an Oscar. I'm, I'm almost positive. Uh, but fucking Quentin Tarantino was talking about if, oh, uh, Tom Hooper, I think was also Okay, there. yeah, well, that was Les Mis, right? He directed uh, Les Mis. Yeah, that was when Les Mis. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, that's his name. Uh but, John Valjean. But uh, they were talking about how he directed Les Mis, and uh, 
Quentin Tarantino was like, if I ever did a musical, that would be how I would do it. You know, like just let live, just that's live crazy. recording. It's and, so cool. And just do it exactly like that. And mm-hmm. David Russell was like, Quentin, please make, make a, a musical. musical. <laughs> yes. Please. I would go crazy. I'd go nuts if Quentin made a musical. That'd be awesome. I'd like, it'd be so weird. Music's is like really important to his thought process. So it'd be really interesting. Mm-hmm. The way he thinks about like the, the soundtracks, his movies yeah. and stuff. Anyway, yeah. we'll talk about all this stuff when we do the Quentin episode. We'll do it. Um, until then, find Chris, uh, read it on his website. You can read his scripts, chrismichaelstock.com, Chris Michael Stock on Instagram. I'm Davinwell25 on Twitter and Instagram. The show, the Chris and Kyle show on Facebook, on YouTube, on all the podcasting platforms, on Instagram, uh, TCAX Pod on Twitter. Like, follow, share, rate, review, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, we look forward to watching some Quentin Tarantino movies for next time and sharing our thoughts. We out! We out. Stay weird.